Equipped with an hourglass to remind us that death will come to all, and wielding a scythe to harvest unfortunate souls, he reaps what has been sown. Hence the name, the Grim Reaper. Nowadays, the Grim Reaper has become a pop culture icon, recognised across the world in books, comics, TV shows, movies and games as a quintessential symbol of death. And whilst we're so familiar with who the Grim Reaper is and what he does, we are less certain about his origins. Where does the Grim Reaper come from? The answer may surprise you. So, many world myths and cultures have some sort of personification of death, especially in the form of a god or goddess. The Greeks had Thanatos, literally translating to death. He is sometimes depicted as a beautiful winged man, occasionally cloaked in black and carrying a sword, but in later depictions, Thanatos appears as a little winged boy, similar to Cupid, this time who carries an upside down torch, eerily representing a life extinguished. The Aztecs have Mictegecuatl, the queen of the realm of the dead, who rules the afterlife with Miklangtagutli, her husband. Hindu and Buddhist mythologies have King Yama, who rides top a buffalo holding a lasso to drag souls into the afterlife. As Buddhism spread to the Far East, so too did he. In China, King Yama turned into King Yan, and in Japan as King Enma. But another common symbol for death, other than a god, is a spectral figure who escorts the living into the world of the dead. Look at these ancient North American cave paintings. They feature these otherworldly beings who are believed to represent spirits that accompany souls into the afterlife. And you may have heard of Charon in Greek myth, a hooded figure who ferries the recently deceased over the river Styx in their passage to the underworld, all for a fee of course. And in Korean myth, there is the netherworld emissary, the Jo Sung Saja. He's depicted as a strict bureaucrat, attempting to meet his busy quota of souls for the day. Now these personifications of death are along the right lines for the Grim Reaper, a figure that appears at the moment of death to take you away with him. So where does he come from? Well, it's not really the Bible, at least not as a cloaked skeleton wielding a scythe. The Angel of Death, sometimes known as Azrael, is often seen as the strongest candidate. But the Bible doesn't really offer any physical description of the angel, no skulls and scythes in sight, and the Angel of Death's job is to kill people. The Grim Reaper doesn't really do the killing here, Perhaps the Grim Reaper is one of the four horsemen of the Apocalypse mentioned in the Book of Revelations. After all, Death, the final horseman of the Apocalypse, is the only one that's actually named. But again, there's no physical description offered for a Grim Reaper. In Greek, the language of the original script, the horseman is actually named Thanatos, Death, the same name for the deity of death in the myths of ancient Greece, and arguably a closer inspiration for this biblical character. So instead of the Bible, there may be good reason to believe that the Grim Reaper comes from a series of folklores across Europe. In the Netherlands, there exists the Mega Hein, also known as the Beenderman, Bone Man. Similar to the Grim Reaper in looks, the Mega Hein is this skeletal figure who appears at times of death and pestilence. But perhaps the closest parallel comes from Celtic folklore, in a being known as the Anku. An Anku appears as a man or a skeleton, and it wears a cloak and often wields a scythe, and in some stories it's described as a shadow often atop of a cart collecting the dead. He's even said to wear a black robe, with a large hat which conceals his face. He's one of Death's henchmen, and his job ranges from protecting graveyards to collecting souls on Death's behalf. And according to a later Christian legend, the Anku was the first child of Adam and Eve. From these figures, the modern Grim Reaper first emerged. It coincided with, and was likely caused, by a key event in the mid-14th century, Around 1346, a mysterious disease had arrived to Europe from Asia, and people were becoming infected by the millions. Now known as the Black Death, it became one of the worst pandemics that has ever existed. To an average medieval peasant, it would seem that the end times were close. The foul stench of rotting flesh was everywhere. Dead bodies lined the streets, were loaded into carts, and dumped into plague pits. During its peak years of 1346 to 1353, the total number of deaths in Europe could be anywhere between 45 to 60 percent, more than half of Europe dead within a few years. And it wasn't just Europe, the Black Death may have reduced the global population from an estimated 475 million to 350 million, just over a quarter of Earth's human population. Death was everywhere, and the motif of skeletons, disease and mortality became extremely prevalent in art and literature. An idea known as the Dance of Death, or Dance Macabre, quickly emerged. 
death became a personified and ever-present figure who does not discriminate between good or bad, rich or poor, holy or unholy, kings and peasants were the same, and will just as likely join death's gruesome dance. All this likely combined with those pre-existing figures of folklore, such as the Mega Hein or the Anku, and all were homogenized into one single skeletal figure, the Grim Reaper. And since then, the Grim Reaper made its way into the hearts, minds, and nightmares of everyday folk. So real or not is ultimately up to you. But in the case of the Grim Reaper, let's hope to never find that one out ourselves. Hey, thank you for watching. So as usual, links are in the description down below. So the channel is currently in an ongoing spike in activity and subscribers, so welcome if you're new here. And if you enjoy my content and want to see more, like, comment, but most of all, subscribe to the channel. I look forward to seeing you next time. Goodbye.